wszystko zaczęło się od króla Jagiełły. Mała Łodzia stała się miastem, które w XIX wieku rozwijało się najszybciej na świecie. W ciągu zaledwie 60 lat od powstania pierwszej manufaktury powstaje przemysłowa, wielonarodowościowa metropolia. Jednak wiatry historii nie zawsze jej sprzyjały. To, co zniszczył los, odbudowują łodzianie. Nasza Łódź. Miasto wielkich szans. Od 600 lat w sercu Polski i Europy. Jesteśmy Polakami. Jesteśmy niezwykłym społeczeństwem. Zawsze w obliczu wielkiego wyzwania potrafimy się mobilizować. Potrafimy stawić czoła wielkim wyzwaniom. Bo nie potrafimy stać obojętnie. Bo obchodzi nas bezpieczeństwo i przyszłość naszych dzieci. Bo wierzymy, że nadzieja zwycięża apatię, lęk i strach. Bo mimo wszelkich przeciwności nigdy się nie poddajemy. Potrafimy ciężko pracować, wspierać się i działać razem. Bo zależy nam na naszej ojczyźnie, naszym osiedlu, naszej ulicy. Bo chcemy naszych niezbywalnych praw i wolności. Bo nie oddamy naszych marzeń. Nadchodzi punkt zwrotny. Dzień dobry. Good afternoon. Esther Povishilova, and I'm a project manager at the Prague office of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom, which is a German liberal political foundation. And I would like to welcome you at our panel, Smart Cities, Time to Change the Default. As you probably know, the concept of smart cities had been for decades associated with things like flying cars and disruptive technologies not really concentrating on the needs of the citizens. And even though this, I would say, um, wild ideas uh, and utopian ideas haven't been gone yet completely, we can still see a shift in this trend. So it's not the disruptive technologies anymore, but it's rather about the innovative solutions. They tackle the challenges that we right now have in seamless and efficient way. And actually now in the focus of everything is the community. This opens us many doors, but also brings many questions. And I would like to address two of the questions at our panel that we are going to have today. The first question is about the participation in urban planning. How can we find the sweet spot between the bottom-up and top-down approach in urban planning? And the second one is about the community. How can the urban planning help to create a community? And why is actually a community very important for people's well-being? And I'm really, really happy that I can tell you we have such a great expertise on one stage. And I would like to introduce you our experts. I would like to start with Maciej Rimer, who is uh, the director of the Ecology and Climate Department at the uh, Lodge City Office. Then I would like to introduce you Agata Tvrdoch, who is uh, architect and urban planner and professor at the Department of Urbanism and Spatial Planning at the Faculty of Architecture at the Silesian University of Technology. Then Dirk Asman, who is uh, the policy uh, advisor on innovation space and urbanism at the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom at the uh, Liberal Institute. And then, last but not least, Milan Berlik, who is head of the uh, department of the participatory planning at the Prague Institute of Planning and Development. I would like to start with setting together or putting together a solid ground for our discussion. Therefore, I would like to ask Agata, what do you imagine or what does it mean for you 
city and who would actually in the ideal world shape it? Who should do that? We talked about it, so it, it had to happen. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm happy we can talk about the city, which is actually the most important thing uh, for me, both uh, from this scientific uh, part of view, and then um, I'm great uh, passionate of the cities. I, I, I love all the cities, and I feel great that in them and uh, all, all my professional work uh, is focused I would say on um, passing this love to the city to everyone around especially my students and why I start with that because um, I guess that this thing is the most important part in our conversation then we have to understand the city first um, because what is the city? We used to have the definition that the city are the densely, uh, in, densely uh, designed buildings uh, with high density and uh, with people who do not work in agri agriculture. But this definition is long um, not relevant anymore. Um, the cities around the world look in really different ways. They are not necessary, highly dense, and uh, not agricultural way of living is also spread around the world, even in uh, units we call villages. So we need to spread this idea of the city also on these non-city areas. Um, and in my opinion, city uh, is what is happening between the buildings. Uh, what is happening between the, between the buildings and be, between the people and the buildings. So I cannot imagine the city without this very um, diverse um, mixture of different ideas, different needs uh, and different perspectives. And uh, only when we will understand this, uh, that this mixture is actually crucial that we create this city with people we don't agree with also. That we cannot be the same in the realm of the city. Then we will be able to um, understand this city, love it as it is, not perfect, not ideal, uh, and um, enhance the city, make it even better. So, in my opinion, this diversity uh, and the conflict also and the conflict also is um, very crucial. Derek, there are many theories about urban planning, but I would like you to explain us the liberal urban planning. What are the basics, let's say, of this idea? Yeah, the fir first of all, uh, thanks for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so. The question is really not that easy to answer because one idea of liberal urban planning is to actually like scale down the top-down planning aspect and trust the people, let the people make decisions. And so this would be more like a bottom-up planning that liberal uh, urbanism uh, is focused on. And we talked about this topic also before the discussion and I also thought about so how can you explain liberal urban planning and I think a good way to explain it uh, is to uh, look at the exact counter model and the exact counter model would be a city like Pyongyang in North Korea. So a city where everything is planned top down. So every apartment building, every office building, every street, so everything is planned top down and I think you all know the, the, the pictures and videos of Pyongyang and I, I find these always completely strange because what you see in these pictures and videos is you see massive streets, impressive buildings, but it, it always feels strange and the reason for this is there are no, no people around and of course that's strange because I think a city is mostly all about the people. So having the interactions, having face-to-face -face contacts. So cities are really based on the people and this is what you don't find there. 
So in, I, I think in this in this counter model, you see that urban planning is is all about buildings, all about infrastructure, and doesn't really matter what the people actually want. And I think so. Liberal urban planning has to be the other way around. So the people are at the center of the planning process, and you are trying to provide the infrastructure to provide the kind of city that the people really want. And I think this is really the, the big difference. And so for example, so I would also think so in, in terms of planning, I think it's not the decision of a planner to say a neighborhood or a city is growing too fast. I think it's really in terms of planning, you have to observe what's going on in the city, you have to observe the decisions, and then you have to try to, to support these, these decisions. And so if you want to, to summarize it, so what is liberal urban planning? I think it's like, number one, let people make the decisions, use as few regulations as, as possible, use those regulations that are really helpful for the city and provide the infrastructure and everything else that the people really need for their well-being. I don't know it, if it's a good time to interrupt, but maybe uh, because uh, there is a little bit different context for this expression liber liberal planning or liberal city in Poland. We, because um, in fact, we actually do have a problem with uh, too much liberal planning. And uh, it's the way, because first of all, we understand this expression a little bit different. Uh, in our uh, circumstances, it's uh, rather connected with um, privileges for business and for strong players. Um, because we do have literally too little regulations. And if you would like fly down to Poland, what you probably did, you can see what this liber liberal planning brought us. Uh, that everyone could build whatever he wanted. So I think we maybe should find another word for this liberal planning because it's really strongly connected in our heads with this uh, house and no communication at all. So, because what you say is, is that this communication is crucial, that everyone has its say, not only the strong players like the developers or, or big companies. So, in order to give the voice to these small people, to every one of us, uh, we need to have some regulations, because otherwise uh, we are left without the voice. So, maybe we should think about different translation of liberal planning, because liberal planning doesn't play good in Poland. Okay, maybe I can. So then we really have kind of a, a different aspect. So in Germany, the, the, the discussion is, is a little bit different. Um, totally different. Yeah, it's totally different. Um, but so, so as you said, so, um, so that doesn't mean that, that you have to be against regulations. Or, or, or so that's really not what I'm saying. It's more about I, I uh, know, but be, being against regulations that are useless or harmful. Yeah. It's always nice to see that uh, the cultural differences that are not just language based, but also really what's happening in the society, and. Um, yeah, maybe we can move to more practical approach because Maciej, he, he works at the, uh, at the city office. And uh, when you develop projects, I know that you also try to engage with people. You try to make the participation work, right? And um, what do you think is the biggest benefit of it? And also, how do you try to achieve the balance involvement mix, I mean, in the sense of what the city wants, what the architects wants, and then what the people want. So the crucial benefit is acceptance, the social acceptance for the investment. But the, the worst thing is the, the time which we need to spend for, for this discussion. And this is a balance uh, we have to find. And so what is also important, mostly in Poland, I think, uh, is that we are just learning how to 
debate, how to uh, uh, making the discussion between the society and the administration. It is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the heritage uh, after the communism period that the administration is in uh, eyes of the society rather against the society. And this is my personal uh, problem sometimes. Uh, we would like to discuss uh, something. I mean, the concept of uh, public square, the concept of, uh, of investment, but uh, we can uh, touch a very tough, uh, uh, tough reaction uh, of some groups of, in society. And secondly, uh, and this is a very delicate matter, uh, some groups uh, cause them uh, the, the, the social groups in the fact being uh, the politics and uh, to find the proper uh, limitation of uh, of the politics and uh, the good urban planning this is also something very important mostly in uh, young democracy like uh, like polish uh, in in last uh, uh, in last 12, 20 years we've built the self government and still our society is waking up, mostly uh, in the process of involvement uh, in creating the cities. And according to the, uh, to the German and Polish law, it is very, uh, very sad true that uh, Polish law, according to the urban planning, is, uh, uh, is very, very, it's not a good way to say liberal, it's uh, a lack of, uh, of law in uh, that, uh, that field. And my family lives in uh, Bayern. And uh, they have to choose a restricted group of colors in the, their uh, in the village uh, to put on the front of the building. We have got uh, the freedom to use uh, uh, use our pr private property uh, for almost every uh, purpose we want. I mean, small house, big house. If we have, haven't got the urban master master plan. And in which the, um, uh, the percentage of, of covering of the city of, uh, with such plants is around 50% after 20 years. Uh, it is not, uh, it's not uh, a good thing and the parliament prepared uh, this legal act uh, in that way because of the interest of the, of the developers and in, uh, in interest of the um, private processors, and this is very bad for the urban planning. Thank you. Well, I mean, we still get that there are some, or oh, many benefits of de-participation. We know the situation in Poland is complicated, for what I see. But we also heard that sometimes you uh, see some struggles when you uh, have to encounter people that are against the project, uh, possibly. It's I mean, in this sense, I would like to ask Milan, because um, we usually think that the participation is a good thing for each of the pro every project. Is it really the case? Well, <clears throat> well, not always, not always. Hi, everyone. I'm Milan from Prague. Um, we once went to Barcelona in 2016 uh, to learn about uh, public space revitalization and about participatory planning. And um, this guy from uh, the municipality of Barcelona, some um, you know, high profile uh, um, um, official, he was taking us on a tour through Barcelona for like four hours. We went to, you know, to the beach, to La Rambla, to everywhere. And then he took us to this little square. Um, I forgot what it's called, it's in Rambla, it's got this like big white cultural building, maybe some of you know, and uh, from this square there's a, there are little streets, they are about 100 meters long, yeah, and uh, when we were walking through this little street, it was empty, it was, uh, like there were people but there were no cars, and um, it was because there were like poles standing, uh, you know, from the pavement. Not, not like Polish people, but uh, <laughs> Poles, you know. Um, and uh, we, we were thinking with, with my colleagues from the Institute, oh, this is a great idea, we should do this in Prague, because we didn't have them, uh, or not many of them by then. So we asked the local uh, official, like, uh, I thought I'm going to learn something about participation, yeah, participatory planning. So we asked him, like, how did you communicate this with the locals, you know, like there were, because he said there were cars before and then they, you know, banned the cars with these poles. And uh, he said, well, we, we asked them to move their cars and then we put in the poles. 
<laughs> I was like, okay, like, did, did you tell them that you are moving the cars because you are putting in the poles? And he said, no, 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 they would, they would get angry, you know? <laughs> I was like, okay, interesting. Uh, and, you know, this, this gives you an example of what I want, wanted to talk about. Um, you know, there were, you know, the street was about 100 meters long, 5 meters wide. You could probably park 10, 15 cars in the street, but there were probably 400, maybe 500 people living in the buildings, you know, of the street. So only 10 of them could actually park their car. So they, that, they just decided, okay, we're just going to flush them out, basically. You don't need participation for that. And that brings me to, um, um, you know, apart from the story, I'm going to give you a bit of theory that we are using. Um, <clears throat> if you are deciding whether participation is worth it in a project, you look at impact and viability, two key words. Impact, does it have actual, actual impact on people's lives, what you are planning to do? Or is the, um, uh, are there any negative impacts? For example, if you are building a water treatment facility for a city which has been complaining for 30 years that the river is dirty and the water treatment facility is like far away from everyone, doesn't really impact negatively the people, then you can just go and build it. You don't need to really ask people about, you know, or, 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 what, what do they think about it because they would accept it anyway. Um, but, you know, if you are revitalizing, revitalizing a brownfield in the middle of the city and 100,000 people are living around it, of course you need, to, you need to involve them because there's a chance for positive and negative impact. Negative impact, you know, construction for 20, 30 years. Positive impact, there can be new schools, kindergartens, services, you know, connecting the, the different parts of the city conveniently and so on. And you also need to look at viability, yeah? Viability means you should not involve citizens in co-decision making if you, do, if you do not believe the project is viable. You know, you're gonna spend two, three years speaking to people, <laughs> he's nodding his head, probably knows, knows about it, me too, unfortunately, lots of projects like that. Um, you, you, if you involve people for two, three years, you're going to be promising them through participation, you know, there's going to be a new brown, you know, brownfield redevelopment, new school, new this, new that, new bridge, and then it doesn't happen, then you're going to lose their trust. And it's the worst thing that can actually happen in, in participatory planning. So, well, and then, you know, in viability, you also have categories time and money. You need to have enough time for participation, enough money. That's it for me now. <laughs> Well, I would like to follow up on Chciałbym podsumować te pytania zadawane panu i Maciejowi, bo to wy macie doświadczenie w tym, jak najefektywniej angażować ludzi. Jakie są sposoby na to? I think we ever get more than 5 to 10 percent of people from a given locality to actually actively participate. Um, I hope it's because they trust us that we're going to do it well. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's probably also down to the um, communication or, or difficulty of communicating the process. Like, you know, and, and also, you know, people don't really have time uh, to, to participate that much. Filling in, a, filling in a questionnaire, that's fine. Yeah, people can do it at home or on a tram in a metro but actually coming in person to an event, you know, people have kids, they've got, they have jobs, they are, they are busy. So it's, it's, it's difficult. And also, you know, for if you would like to inform 200,000 people that something's happening, you're probably gonna have to spend like 200, well, even more, half a million euros, you know? So it, it, would, be, it would be really, really expensive. So not everyone participate. And it's from difficult. my perspective, the most efficient is the direct contact with the users of the space and uh, uh, the, the contact with uh, um, the planners uh, for them to, to explain what are the needs and what are the, uh, the, the problems in the area. And of course, to encourage such discussion, we need to use the media and the social media. Uh, but uh, the most important voices comes uh, from the neighborhood uh, and from the users. Yeah, 100%. If you just go to the locality and speak to people. 
Uh, I of course agree, but I would like to add something from the other perspective as a as an architect and urban planner, uh, and as a citizen also. Uh, the the most uh, the best way. It's of of course it's not possible every time, but the most effective way of uh, using the power of participation is prototyping. So, as you told with these polls, uh, I would rather like uh, the city to put a temporary post at first, uh, make some picnic and talk with, with people, and then they will be okay. It works. Like, if, if, if they, for, for half a year, it would work, it would work every time. So then uh, you won't have these angry citizens. And of course, I know it's not every time possible. Um, but uh, the other thing which is uh, very crucial, and I think that in our Polish city, that's the uh, thing which is uh, most uh, desired, um, is um, this communication, um, because we are really, we don't trust each other all the time. You, you start with the, the people, they don't trust the authorities. Authorities, they don't trust actually the people because they say, if we will tell you something, you will be against and we won't be able to do this. Um, and uh, we all, in theory, we all want the same. We want cities to be better and citizens to have better lives. But sometimes, especially things connected with these parking ideas, which in Poland are extremely difficult to um, encourage. Um, we know, as a speciali specialist, that it would make people's life better. But uh, we cannot say, OK, now you have to take your bike and go to work with a bike. We have to show them. And uh, the, the idea with the plant or the, with the water uh, facility, it's obvious that people will need that. But there are sometimes um, things which are not so obvious. And sometimes we also can learn from the people that maybe biking in this particular area is not going to happen because I don't know something. So uh, during this um, prototyping, we can learn both sides. My further experience is that there is no uh, ideal uh, participation, uh, particip participation plan. Uh, we have to fit uh, each uh, pro plan for, for each uh, activity and uh, maybe some practical joke uh, for, for you. Uh, we are during the process of investment in, uh, in Łódź uh, uh, for the, one of the biggest public squares. We would like to green it and uh, the architects, uh, the local architects uh, uh, said that uh, they should be the, the, the only group uh, who create this space through the, uh, through the jury, through the, uh, some tender. Uh, and we, we said, no, sorry, we've, uh, uh, we have to involve the society. And I, I had got uh, uh, some, some uh, uh, bad situation with the, um, with the representation of the architects. I like architects, but, uh, but, uh, they, but they said uh, to us, uh, cut off the society and cut off the uh, participation uh, uh, for, for such open discussion. And that was something very, uh, very, very strange for me. But that shows there is no, not only uh, dialogue between the administration and the society, but also the between the administration and the experts uh, who, 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 who are trying, who would like to uh, be the, the key, um, key manager of the process. Maybe, maybe you have some old school architects, all men. <laughs> <laughs> because you also in Łódź has a great uh, example of uh, participatory designing, plac wolności, yes. I'm not sure, uh, Tupi, Łukasz Pancewicz. The same group of architects who are planning the Prasa Dąbrowskiego. So, so that, that's, really, that's really strange because I won't know that the participatory planning was really important part of that. Maybe once more. Okay. <laughs> but actually, thank you for, for, for this flow. And you started my next question, which was for <laughs> Agata, because I know that not all of the architects like the participation model. What are actually the challenges? Because I assume you have more work with this, uh, you have to deal with this, but what, what are the challenges and how to solve them and see the benefits for the architects? 
it's really difficult. It's really difficult because, first of all, you have to have everyone at the same, same page, and we do not have. Uh, we have really different uh, expertise, different uh, education and everything. So the first problem is lack of the education at the very beginning. Uh, lack of this. Um, we don't teach our children to understand the power and the need of this community. That, that's not that I have my chair and it's my chair and I want to have it green, uh, but that the chair is the part of the room and uh, actually it would be better if it would be bl bl blue or, or whatever and that I have to chair, share this chair maybe sometimes with somebody else. Uh, so everyone is afraid that we're going to take something from him. And everyone is really scared that he's going to lose. So that's the first most important um, part, I guess. And then, of course, there is a problem with education of architects. Uh, as I think that it's all over the world, but in Poland, it's still really, um, really uh, a problem that they are taught to be uh, experts, demiurgs, uh, somebody who knows everything. Um, we're trying to change this way of uh, teaching uh, young architects, but it's a process, it's not so easy, uh, because they need to know that they, uh, they do not have this um, panaceum for everything, that uh, people, they actually know better what they would need. Just we need to show them the possibilities, because if they've never seen anything more than just the parking lot, I will stick to these parkings, uh, that, they, they, that they don't believe that it would be something better if we will change this parking. So we have to show them a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, movies, a lot of ideas. So that's why these all the meetings, I think that they are very important. Uh, there are also there is also a lot of festivals with movies about the cities. And it would be great if we could bring these movies to schools, to, to, to things which we, when everyone would be able to see it and understand this uh, idea of the city. And then this participatory uh, conversation would be much easier because everyone will be on the same page. I think Milan wanted to add something. We, we used to be in that situation in Czech Republic uh, or in Prague maybe even three, four years ago. But, uh, you know, since we actually started requiring participatory planning processes massively, basically we, we make them part of the public tender for anything that architects or urban planners do. And, uh, well, on one hand, those people who do not want to mess with participation, they don't apply they apply somewhere else. And, uh, you know, those who want to do the tender, they, they, they need to accept it. And once they tried once or twice, maybe three times, they, they start seeing the benefits that their, actual, their work is getting better because it's informed by the citizens, by their actual needs. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, it took a long time. <laughs> Um, I have actually a question for Milan again, <laughs> and it's uh, that the Institute, the Prague Institute for uh, Planning and Development, some years ago released the manual for for Prague for the Prague City, how to work with the participation, how to involve it. Why is it important for Prague, and how is it different than other guides? It, it, it's not so different from other manuals and guides because we basically copied them when we were doing it. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, uh, like, you need to understand, at the beginning, when our office in, uh, was established in 2015, there was nobody in Czech Republic doing any participatory planning, and we didn't know how to do it. Apart from our boss, who was the kind of founder of the, of the office, he had some experience, but not in Europe. It, it was like a third world uh, development um, through an a NGO. So we basically put together, we've read like five, six other guides, we've put the information together and try to apply it, but only theoretically, on uh, Czech planning processes. And then we just tested it, tested it, tested it. We saw that it kind of worked, 
but um, you know the manual is is not so user friendly so we now have a website basically a web version we call it base camp of participation like the base camp when you're going up a mountain and uh, there you find every information online and we just keep adding basically we don't use the manual anymore Derek, you're the policy advisor the observer of everything what's happening uh, is there any manual like this for the German for, for the German uh, authorities? And also, do they work? Do they try to follow it? Oh, it's already on. Um, so first of all, so uh, just to make sure, because at the beginning there was this confusion. So when when you tell this uh, kind of um, participation and how you can make the people participate in the city. So basically, the, the, this is what I was talking about. That is, yet you say the infrastructure, the city is all about the people. The infrastructure has to be for the people. And and just to make make sure um, that you understand this correctly and um, that you get an, an idea how the the, the situation in, in Poland and Germany. Uh, maybe differs. Um, so maybe uh, here in Poland, I, I totally understand this kind of problem. In Germany, we we have a completely different discussion about. So, for example, uh, so uh, pr we have pr price regulation and building height uh, restrictions. So this is at the moment the, the the biggest discussion in Germany. So Germany has a, a huge lack of uh, apartment space, and therefore. You have to, to to make this discussion about how can you make it easy to build, how can you make it cheaper to build, and this is maybe the the angle from which I was was talking about. Yeah. So we we, we have um, I, I think this 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 very yeah at the moment um, there's just too much regulation, which is maybe the other way in in Poland. So just that you yeah, you understand this this difference. And now to your question, which you have to ask again. <laughs> we were talking about the guide uh, in Prague, for example, yeah. for the local administration, how they could involve the participation model. Is there anything like this existing in Germany that is actually used and that is beneficial? Do you have any? Report about this. So I, I think that, so that, that there are um, certain guidelines in, in use, and they're um, they're used in. in, in what, but I think it, it's it's very different uh, among different types of of cities. So in Germany, so there are some cities where people really can participate, and there are many cities where. The citizens really can't participate, so there is no like national guideline how to to make this happen. So it really depends on the on the city you are living in. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah maybe it's it's also maybe ty type of the the federal system in Germany that you have like in every federal state um, uh, these differences, but there is no one guideline that you have like in in Germany. Yeah. I would like to ask Maciej, um, because in November 2021, you, the city of Wuch introduced the new strategy for the city, and there was a lot of emphasis on the word community and the concept of the community. And this is actually, in, in how I perceive it, uh, already one step ahead of the participation itself, that you are thinking really long term, let's say. How did you come to this approach, and um, yeah, where do you see the advantages of creating the community? Yes, the strat strategy says that uh, uh, citizens should be uh, not only involved but to be responsible for the city, and this is our target, our aim, to uh, involve even deeper the citizens and uh, create the. Uh, uh, the real responsibility uh, between the in the society, and this is our uh, our need, uh, not only because of the moment of uh, of policy, but also because of the moment of economy. Uh, I mean the the fiscal issues uh, connected with the with the government. Uh, but what is also important, uh, Madam Mayor, in last 
10, 12 years, uh, changed this city very deeply. But uh, the expectations of the new, uh, of the actual, uh, actual uh, young people are even bigger. We, we have to, we, we want to be faster, uh, we want to be better, and uh, still we are in the post-industrial city and we have got a huge group of problems. So our response, um, our response is that, uh, come on with us and change the city with us. Not uh, only make a pressure on the administration to, cre to, to cre create a new uh, city, but be a part of this uh, creation. And this is uh, the real concept of, uh, of, of the strategy. And so on my field, I mean the field of, of environment and then climate, uh, we've created something we called Eco Pact for, the, for Wood. Uh, and this is an instrument uh, through which uh, we inv invited uh, firms, companies, and, and first sector. Uh, to uh, make a, a sponsorship, uh, to make the uh, involvement itself. I mean, uh, in this week, and even we have got uh, um, uh, some actions of uh, cleaning of, of uh, uh, empty areas uh, through the employees of the of the companies. And this will, this is something we understand uh, in uh, uh, in being involved in, in the city. I see, like, which is the ideal case? <laughs> I saw uh, Milan we, we nodding. We have got the, the citizens <laughs> of the city of Łódź on the, on the, on the, in the publicity. I'm uh, quite sure that uh, we are not the ideal uh, city in their eyes, <laughs> but we are trying. <laughs> well, and it's perfect. Actually, I wanted to ask Milan, how do you, because urban planning is think of politics. Um, if there is not such an open uh, city administration, how do you try to approach them and to explain them that the community and the um, participation could be beneficial for them? Mm. Basically, like with everything, you need to put yourself in other person's shoes. So if you speak into a politician, you need to put yourself in politician's shoes. And um, um, you need to well, either find out the interest that they have, or if you work with politicians long term, you kind of know what, uh, what their goal is, and that usually is re-election, right? So um, uh, you need to sell them the idea of participation through that. So for example, you know, if you tell them, if you're gonna involve citizens, you're gonna have nice data sets about people's needs, so that you can better shape your decisions, which will then better suit the people, yeah? And they're gonna be happy and they're gonna re-elect you. You don't need to say the last bit, you know, but they, they will understand, they will understand that, you know, this is beneficial for them. Then, um, you know, if you in involve people in decision-making, you are increasing trust of those people towards politicians, towards institutions, yes? And, uh, if you're talking to a more, let's say, open-minded politician who's looking more long-term into the future, like past his uh, election period, um, you, can, uh, you can sell the idea of participation based on uh, increasing resilience of the society to, uh, towards instability. You know, we all know what's coming, 10, 20, 30 years, climate change, you know, half of Africa and Asia will want to get into Europe. And uh, we need to, like, you know, our society needs to be prepared for hard times, yes? And uh, how do we prepare for hard times? Increasing trust and increasing, like, the flexibility in decision-making, the adaptability, you know. Uh, if people are used to talking to each other, if people are used to discussing difficult topics like parking, <laughs> yeah, then, you know, they, it, it's like a training for, uh, for, you know, for the harder times ahead. That, so that's, that's how you sell it to, um, well, to anyone, I guess. <laughs> I have, uh, well, talking about the public or the local administration, I have a rather controversial question for Derek. Because, well, I was kind of thinking that uh, if you want to build something in a city, there is a lot of bureaucracy, even though, as we just heard, um, maybe not that much in Poland, so <laughs> maybe you can add something to it. But there are some theories saying that uh, if there is a lot of bureaucracy, uh, if you want to build something or uh, do anything, it's kind of like a mirror of the society, because uh, if there, the bureaucracy is just too high or there is just too much of it, there is just not really a mutual trust uh, within the society. 
Do you agree, disagree? What are our thoughts about it? Uh, so I'm uh, glad that you already uh, talked about the situation. So I'm talking from the German perspective again, so uh, only to make sure you, you would, uh, don't be too angry with me. <laughs> Um, I, I think it's really true is that so the less bureaucracy you have, the fewer regulations you have, um, then you have to trust the people in their decisions. And I think there, then you have to trust. And therefore, there, I certainly think that there is a correlation. And I, I don't think bureaucracy is a problem at all. Yeah. But I, I really think a society can only function if you have an. Um, like um, you need a minimum amount of bureaucracy, otherwise a, a society cannot function. And as a city is just like a smaller society or is a society, it can only function with um, bureaucracy in place. But I think, and so this is the situation in, in Germany, it's the extent of bureaucracy, which is a huge problem. So it's it's very, very, very expensive to build because of all the regulations you have. And therefore, um, you don't get the apartment spaces you, you really would need in Germany at the moment. And for a city, th this is problematic. It's also problematic for the foundation of firms. So if it's re really, you have all this bureaucracy, so it gets really cumbersome to found a, a new company. So, and therefore, it, it can make things uh, extremely, yeah, extremely uh, stressful and, and problematic. So, I think you, you, you have to get rid of the regulations of the bureaucracy, um, which is unnecessary and maybe harmful, and really focus on the, those bureaucracy that makes the city function. So you need regulation in order to guarantee fire protection. You need bureaucracy and regulation in, in order to, be the, to have a city that is accessible for everyone. And um, so this is, I, I think, a, a really important thing really to focus on this type of bureaucracy and get rid of the bureaucracy that's, that's harmful for you. I think Agatha wanted to say something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, of course, uh, we, we, I cannot not agree with you. It's right, but I would rather to um, ask maybe not very... Um, the question maybe not very in the subject of our conversation, but you mentioned twice or, or, or even more times that uh, there is not enough flats in uh, Germany and that you need to build more. So I think that for like 30 years till today, we were learning from the East, uh, Western Europe. I think that that's the time you would learn something for, in, for, like from us and from our mistakes. Because uh, first thing is that you have more than 500 flats per 1,000 citi uh, 1, citizens, yes. Uh, that's more than one apartment for each two persons. So, actually, I'm not sure that uh, each household is one person in Germany and that you really need these flats. Because that's the same problem in Poland, that we all our uh, spatial policy is uh, focused on the issue of not enough flats. And we build them, really, we, we build them for last three years, we build them more than whole Europe. We are on the top and uh, the affordability of the flats is even lower than it was like five years ago. So it doesn't help. And what, what, what has happened is that we destroyed our uh, in-between in spaces for like next 100 years. We're not going to uh, restore these open areas and we're not going to achieve the cities from these flats we've built, because they are just flats in the middle of, of nowhere. So your regulations are not so bad. And uh, we were also talking about the climate uh, things. If we don't need these flats, we need uh, to understand uh, this problem a little bit different. Uh, also German, but also German example, uh, like 10 years 
or more in Berlin, that you had all these regulations, and the Berlin, the city of Berlin, uh, was the owner of really a lot of flats. Then they sold them, and then they had to rebuy them for like much more money. And the problem in Berlin with flats is still huge because they let some regulations go away. So letting regulations go away in in this term is not the best solution. Yeah. So. Just um, be very just sharp, have, please. Uh, we are so running out of time. Short, uh, so, so really, uh, only one thing, so it's, it's right. So we, we have enough flats in Germany, but um, more and more people want to move to cities. And that's really, it's not really, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but it's something that you, yeah, you have to do something about. I think you, you can say, um, so you, 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 you can't, come to the cities, there would be flats where you could live. So I think if you need these flats in the cities because the people want to move to cities, I think it's a task of uh, policymakers to make sure that this happens. And of course, getting rid of bureaucracy is, is, is really not the only solution, but I, I think in Germany, it's, it's I, I would say, one part of the solution. I like this Polish-German uh, discussion. <laughs> um, as we are running out of time, I would like to ask all of you um, to think about one thesis you would like the uh, audience to bring with them back home. Be very sharp, one minute. What should they take back home about the community and participation? Okay, I have the microphone, so I will start. First of all, I think that what you said about these most uh, important uh, things in participatory planning is, is, is very important, and I will take it for my students also. And the second thing is that uh, remember to be always on the same page with everyone you're working with. Even, even not matter if you're a, like a, a city councillor or, or, or an architect or um, just a citizen. From my perspective, uh, we need to strengthen in Poland uh, the um, protection of the environment, uh, mostly the trees and green areas in the cities through the urban, urban planning. And uh, this is very crucial thing for the society and the pressure is making for the society on the administration very, very, uh, very high. And the legal act, I mean uh, the, the, the act uh, which passes through the parliament uh, uh, that didn't uh, give us any possibility to protect uh, such uh, uh, green components on the private property. Uh, not only uh, only tool is to to create uh, some restricted areas, and this uh, is something very uh, practical uh, in my work and in work of uh, all the self governments in the Poland. So uh, I would say um, you should remember that there are differences between Germany and, and Poland. <laughs> and the, the second thing I would say is, so, so I don't know what is the, the best way of participation. So you mentioned great ways how you can do it, but it's just extremely, extremely important. Because as I said at the beginning, um, so cities is about the people and the infrastructure that you provide and the public spaces that you provide, everything. So this also has to be the power about the people and therefore I think, yeah, that's really, really important. At the beginning, you asked, uh, was the sweet spot for participation? I would say the sweet spot is, um, it, it tastes bitter, yeah? Uh, <laughs> because uh, I always say, uh, successful participatory planning process results in everyone being a little bit angry. Not too much, not too little, yeah? But that means that everyone had to actually make a compromise because he understood the, the interests of every, everyone else, yeah? And I think, you know, this actually should be the, 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 the end goal or the ideal of, of uh, any democratic discussion. I would say. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you all for the lovely discussion. Um, first of all, I, I hope that 
um, this Polish-German thing and this dialogue will continue because we know that the Polish government is pretty much anti-German at this point. Uh, and we see that we can still uh, have a nice discussion about different points of view and maybe find a common ground. But also thank you for uh, what you said now, Milan, because what I wanted to say, I think that the public engagement is one of the pillars of democracy and we can see it on many levels. And one of them is also the urban planning. So thank you for this and thank you. And I hope that you will, send, uh, you will have some food for thought when you go home. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this, or like this. It may be a burden, but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. But if it means this for one person and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels how it tastes, and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything. And if we all fight for it, it will eventually bring us together. Dzień dobry, to znaczy myśmy się dzisiaj widzieli. Wie pan co, ja zmieniłem zdanie i chciałbym poprawić karty w urnie. Dobrze, to ja sobie poszukam. Serio? Pan sobie poszuka? Nadchodzące wybory są zbyt ważne, by zostawić je bez kontroli. Dołącz do obywatelskiej kontroli wyborów. Zróbmy wybory bez pizzy. Jestem z zawodu lekarzem. Zajmowała się diagnostyką chorób nowotworowych. W Białorusi zajmowałam się mikrobiologią i marypiarnej biologią. Byłem nauczycielem szkoły podstawowej. Naszym celem jest budowanie umiejętności, które są ważne na polskim rynku pracy. Szybko nabierają takiej pewności siebie, bardzo szybko się uczą. Wszystko możliwe, kiedy starasz się. Każdy wybór ma swoje konsekwencje. Dziś na kazaniu o takich jak ty mówili, że to morderczynie. A wiesz, że ta, która ci pomogła trafi za kraty? Trzeba mieć sumienie. Jak mogłaś to zrobić własnej matce? Aborcja to najgorsza zbrodnia. Gdybym ja podjęła taką decyzję, nie byłoby cię tutaj. Organy państwa nie będą przyglądać się temu obojętnie. Życie i zdrowie kobiety jest najważniejsze. Stop kryminalizacji aborcji. Kobieta decyduje.